Gaffer Exeter to come on Tuesday night, but first of all, if we look back to Saturday's win over Cheltenham, a bit of a strange game where we maybe didn't make the most of the what you might call the easier chances that that we created, but we scored three great goals. So what are your no, the, the three goals are brilliant, but the the, the first goal is a, is an area that we do try and try and capitalise on, especially when we play Tom James and Galbraith at, at fullbacks. Um, Ollie O'Neill's got that in his locker. I, I love the fact that his first touch is is really really good. It sets him, it, it allows him to open his body up and and curl it in a far corner. And we know that Ruel has got that instinctive finish on him. So um, I thought it was a really good performance. We got a little bit loose in in the last twenty minutes. Um, but sometimes that's understandable. I do want our mentality to be our mentality to be right all the time. But a um, lot of good performances, loads of positives. Um, we'll mix it up tomorrow. We'll give the other lads that, that won a game a, a chance to impress. Um, because my mind is now on to next season, and I want to try and try a few things and make sure we get the personnel right going forward. After the Peterborough game last Monday, you said that they, when they came forward, they'd always get a shot off or they'd get a cross off. How pleased were you to see us be doing more of that? Now, we've been asking for that all the season, and but it is about repetition, practice, belief, confidence. Um, and I do think that in the last four or five games, our striker has just been a little bit leggy. And if you're a little bit leggy and you're not fresh, the hardest part of the game is scoring goals. Um, that's why it amazes me when Roy Keane says Haaland is League Two. He does the hardest thing. Scoring a goal, doesn't matter how it is, is the hardest thing. That's why they cost the most money. It's the hardest thing in the game to do. So um, when you're a little bit fatigued, that sharpness, that brightness, that that belief that you're going to score is always the most difficult. But um, it was three great strikes and hopefully we can go out going forward. We've, I think Ollie O'Neill scored four or five now in short space of time. Uh, I think Shaq is one short double figures. Ruel is on 11. So we do have players that are improving. And if we keep them players, I expect the numbers to go up next year. How much do you think you can learn in these last four games with next season in mind? I think it's more, we know the ability, we know the types of players we've got. I think it's more in their mentality, the culture that we want to set. Um, The enthusiasm to still go and get three points and entertain our supporters, even though there's, there's not much to play for. But in my mind, there is. So I just look for little signs, reactions, body language. Um, because I think that if you have them fundamentals, I think they stand you in good stead throughout the season. We're all going to play well, we're all going to cl- play badly. We're going to score good goals, we're going to score tapping, we're going to c- concede p- uh, poor goals, we're going to score set plays, we're going to concede from set plays. They're all variables, but in a lot of things, in what we can control, I want us to be, to be right on point. So, um, like I've said before, these, these numerous contracts that are, that are up, so... Um, you know, we we like a lot of the players and there's going to be some contracts offered, but there's some at the moment that are, are just in a balance. And Exeter to come, what kind of challenge are they going to give us? Well, Exeter was our first win, away win when we played them. They were top of the league. I think we were near the bottom um, and we scored late on. Um, loads of rotations, loads of passing, good team. Went on an unbelievably bad run, fair play to him. Obviously, he's stuck with Gary and... He's come through that and I think they're looking to finish strong and, and build for next season. So um, it's always been quite a, a stable club. Obviously, Matt Taylor had a number of years before that, made some good player sales, the likes of Ollie Watkins. And we've trained at their training ground a few times. Matt Taylor was good enough to let us train there. Um, so the foundation's there for a really, really good club. And um, it'll be a tough game. How significant was that away win at Exeter in the sort of grand schemes of our season with it being our first away win? Well, you're always, as soon as you start a season, you're always looking for your first win. Ideally, you want it to come on the opening day of the season. But um, it was important the way it was. I thought we'd, we we deserved to win the game on a day. I, if I remember back, they had a couple of international players missing, a few injuries. Um, so maybe it was a good time to play them, but it, it, it got us off. It got us off the mark in terms of winning. And I think after that, we went on a decent run. And just lastly, it's our last Tuesday night game of the season. How nice would it be to have the stadium as full as it can be? Well, that's, all, that's always the, the case. And like we say, we'll be picking an, an entertaining team to try and score goals. I do want the shackles to be off. I want us to express some, ourselves and score more goals. It could, it could have been it could have been 8-4 on, on Saturday. And we're going to try and not quite like Manchester United, where it's a basketball game and it's absolute madness. But um, we want some structure, but we, we do want to attack and score goals entertain so if as many as possible can come um, 
it leads us nicely into a, a brilliant game at Derby and then obviously the last home game of the season. When you are picking a team that does involve some young players getting opportunities, how beneficial is it for them to be playing in front of a, a vocal crowd? How much will they learn? You've only just thought of that question, haven't you? Yeah. It's when <clears throat> So we, the likes of Zek, I when I watch Zek train, um, and I'm going to be really honest, when I watch Zek, watch, watch Zek train, quite a tongue twister, he's so talented. The way that he takes a ball, the way he manipulates the ball, the way that he scores, I think he's a top, he's a top player in there. But he's only young, and when we've exposed him to the to the Papa John's games, he's just not quite been at it. Lactic acid has kicked in. Um, he's not been quite as um, dynamic as we'd, as we'd hoped. Um, and he's tired pretty quickly. When you've got a full house, it's totally different. The, the crowd energising, he played a wonderful diagonal ball and the crowd cheering, it, it gives him energy. So we can build his confidence, we can build his, his, his self-esteem and his belief up by playing in front of supporters, some of them Papa John's and, and the friendly, they're, they're so tough to play in. Um, so we will give other opportunities, but I'm not, I'm not giving three spots in my team to players that are not ready or not doing it in training. The fact that he got his, his opportunities because he's trained really well and he's been playing really well in the, in the games that we put on the friendlies, so um, I'm really pleased for him. But if you ask any footballer, you can be a really good player, but if you don't play in front of anyone, it can be it can be difficult to motivate yourself, difficult to play at the right intensity levels, but when, when the crowd's full, it, it becomes a lot easier.